with the degree of misinformation that is going around today. I mean, it is amazing that, uh, you know, the prime minister of the country says things which are contrary to what the president has said, and, uh, and so on. So this misinformation, well, the two ways of looking out at it. I would commend the establishment for thinking on their feet so that as people, you know, the urban naxals like us <laughs> point out, as we point out uh, flaws in what they are saying or untruths in what they are saying, they change tack. And what is uh, said yesterday is no longer true today, and so on. There's a new truth. Now, again, I mean, I'll come to that in a little more detail later, but let's remember what uh, the policy of Herr Goebbels was uh, some years ago in a central European country. Uh, now, the other problem is that in the darkness of the evening or the night, as we saw also in Maharashtra, uh, and uh, as has been pointed out, certain advanced steps have been taken administratively, which in fact are precursors to the CAA. Uh, and this has gone whether it's the Reserve Bank or whether it is the refugees from Pakistan coming in, this has gone unnoticed. Uh, I will take the liberty of uh, reading out briefly from the uh, jury's conclusions after the uh, People's Tribunal on what happened in Assam over several years. And I, whether or not Assam itself is replicated, I do believe that we need to keep this at the back of our minds to understand what could happen. I will read out briefly. They noted it is not just mental distress which is killing people. There are inhuman processes involved in the whole NRC, which is forcing people to die in most unfortunate ways. And this is not just like people like me, who are generalists and not very educated in these matters, but this is a view of two, among others, of two former judges of the Supreme Court and a judge of the Delhi High Court and other distinguished citizens and lawyers. Literally, millions of people were asked to appear before the verification officers in faraway places multiple times to prove their citizenship credentials. In most cases, the verifications were held outside the home district. People died in the NRC queues, in vehicle accidents, attending arbitrary long-distance hearings on very short notice and of heat strokes. In sum, the jury would like to emphasize that in the context of Assam, as well as in the country, citizenship as the right to have rights is one of the most basic fundamental human rights in modern societies. Deprivation of citizenship must follow the most rigorous procedure available. The overriding concern must be fairness not quickness or efficiency. Now, of course, after all these, after people spending months and years and dying in detention centers, which we are told do not exist, uh, now, after all this, when the results did not tally with what was expected, which is millions of illegal Muslim immigrants in Assam, then the whole thing was 
terminated. It didn't happen. I mean, can you think of the costs? I'm not talking about the financial cost of a few thousand crores, but of the enormous human cost that was paid by people in Assam in pursuit of this shibeda. Now, I will digress a little here in the case of Bangladesh. Now, I have no authority to speak on either the people of Bangladesh or the minorities in Bangladesh, but having spent many, many years there and also spent some years in Pakistan, I think I should share some of my views on this. I cannot stand here and say that minorities in Bangladesh have not suffered, certainly. But it is completely untrue to claim, as is being done, that it is a systematic persecution of the minorities in Bangladesh. That's a falsehood. There have been periods, there have been ups and downs. But if we look at the recent past, I would like to share just some figures with you. I can remember them. The decadal increase in the Indian population from, 1900, from 2001 to 11 was, I think, 17.7%. That in Bangladesh was 17.1%. So they increased less. And even if we translate that to figures, it does not lead to millions coming into India. But here, let us also note that the fertility rate of women in Bangladesh is lower than in India. The annual rate of growth of population in Bangladesh is lower than in India. So what the precise figures would translate into, I cannot say. But I think when we do as, unfortunately, our Supreme Court did under the pressures of the Sonobal case some 15 years ago, we have to get over this idea that there are millions and millions and perhaps tens of billions of Bangladeshis populating uh, various parts of India to our detriment, most of them being Muslims. Now, and on the subject of, uh, on the subject of minorities, I also need to say that in uh, 2015, a gentleman by the name of Salauddin Qadir Chaudhary, socially extremely prominent, politically powerful, an advisor to a former prime minister, he was hanged for his war crimes against Hindus in 1971. Uh, there have been other instances of Muslims accused of communal crimes being suitably punished in Bangladesh. Well, what can I say when we look back at our record, be it 1984, be it 2002, or what has happened subsequently? Uh, now, Talking of the NRIC that Hush asked me to speak on briefly, uh, individually, if we look at the CAA, the NPR, the NRIC, each one can be in some way justified, perhaps, except in terms of their being illegal in some cases. But the problem here arises that the new NPR of 2020 is not the NPR of previous years. This NPR has certain clauses relating to our parents. And I'm sorry, but I don't, I, I am not able to accept any, any assertion by the government that this and that will not be mixed up. I think they will be. And Having completed this NPR, having acquired this information, people operating the NRIC will have the authority, will have the authority to pick up names at their discretion for further investigation. And I hardly 
I hardly need to tell you what kind of names those are going to be. So the entire objective, and here again, I mean, let me state my view. I think it should probably be shared by all of you. This entire exercise is not about refugees. It is not about Hindus and Muslims and who is coming and who will be given succor. In fact, in Bangladesh, uh, the Hindus are saying that, look, for God's sake, what you are doing will simply uh, give further and to further and to people like the Jamaat to come after us. So it is not the con our concern about the minorities in Bangladesh or in Afghanistan or Pakistan. The objective is to create laws which can be held as a sort of democracy on the Muslim citizens of this country. And I think that is the danger before us. I think that is the challenge that we have to face in whatever way we can. Uh, I was looking at what happened in Germany in the 1930s. I mean, you had the uh, Nuremberg Laws of 1935, uh, which started what concluded the process of disenfranchising the Jews. And there are other similarities. We all know that the founders of this current uh, way of thinking in India took their, uh, took their uh, so what's happened in Germany of their fatherland, our Pitribhumi, not Matribhumi, though we believe in Bharat Mata, uh, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as, their, as, their, uh, as, their, as their icon. Now, it goes further, and I think this needs to be studied by us in some detail. Somebody in the establishment has. When I see uh, this tirade against love jihad, I am reminded of the German laws against sexual relations between Germans and Jews. So there is an antecedent for whatever we are doing. There is a thought process that is going on. and. Uh, I think we need complete clarity on what the objectives are.